This video is a recording from the Men Improvement Podcast, brought to you by menprovement.com, the number one self improvement resource strictly for men. Go there today to see all podcasts, improve yourself as a man, and get access to three free ebooks, including one that will help you triple your testosterone naturally. Thank you and enjoy. Ready to take your life to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Get all the information you need to be better, improve everything, and live life like a pro. This is the Men Improvement Podcast with Sean Russell. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Men Improvement Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Russell, a self improvement enthusiast who is obsessed with taking his life to the next level. And I created this podcast to help myself and men from all around the world do just that. The topic of today's show is how to build a wardrobe that women want to see you wearing. The guest of this show is Megan Collins, also known to the world as the Style Girlfriend. Now, it's a pretty badass nickname that she got from starting the men's style blog, StyleGirlfriend.com, which brings men fashion advice from a woman's point of view. She also just authored the book, how to build a wardrobe that women want to see you wearing, which is ironically the name of our show. So I thought she would be the perfect guest and I got her on here and here she is. What's up, Megan? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Sean? I'm great. Thanks so much for being here, Megan. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I love I love what you do. You know, there's so many style blogs out there, but I think you're the only one that I've seen that gives fashion advice for men from a woman's point of view. It's really unique. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly not better or worse than anyone else's perspective. It's it's just different. And I think that uh, for the guys that don't necessarily care about fashion with, you know, a capital F, they just want to leave the house every day looking good for their wife, their girlfriend, their boss, the girl at the end of the bar. Uh, style girlfriend definitely can provide that sort of shortcut to great style. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how did you how did you end up getting into all this stuff? You know what? It's so funny. I, I always say I wish I could tell you that I had done this, you know, broad sweeping competitive analysis of the landscape and found that from menswear, but I, I actually just fell ass backwards into it. I uh, was leaving a pretty unsatisfying career in advertising and was basically just taking on any freelance writing gigs I could get. And one of the things that I took on at that time was writing a weekly column for a friend of mine who was starting a custom suiting company and he just wanted, you know, more content for his, for his site. So he said, you know, I know you're looking to write more. Why don't you write something on just what women like to see guys wearing? Uh, which sounded great to me. I mean, I think you could ask most women and even if they don't consider themselves, uh, any kind of expert on, on style or fashion, they certainly have opinions, <laughs> uh, both good and bad on yeah. what they see the men in their lives wearing. So, you know, I really, I always wanted, I, from the very beginning, I always wanted to position it uh, as coming from a place of encouragement and positivity. And, and it's, you know, it's not about, oh, God, would you, you know, I wish guys would stop wearing X. It was, hey, guys, you know, women think you look so great when you wear Y. So to be able to kind of um, always be coming from the perspective of, of being really encouraging and uh, supporting guys who are maybe taking some some steps with evolving their style. That was always the goal. And it, it seemed like it really struck a chord because it did uh, grow pretty quickly, which I feel really lucky to say that that's the case. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. That That's important that you say that you differentiate from, you know, just being like the typical, like, uh, like we don't want to see you wearing this too, you know, generally like helpful, like motivating people and uh, boosting them through positivity. Like that's beautiful. I really like that. That's probably the number one thing I like about your site. Yeah, well, it's so funny because I find that uh, I I have wives and girlfriends at home, um, so they're not, you know, just single guys that are looking. To, you know, how can I impress a woman? It's a lot of guys that are in relation. They're already in relationships, but I think that um, you know, and I've probably been guilty of this in the past. But I think there's a lot of women who feels so comfortable with the man in their life that they, they feel like they can just say, Oh honey, don't wear that. Or, Oh honey, don't, you know, really that again. So yeah. you're, you're going to wear that. <laughs> right. Exactly. So it's sort of this like nagging that isn't really conducive to, to getting guys to change or to getting them to maybe try something new. So for me to be coming at it from a really, um, 
again, positive angle I, that does differ me from even the women in these guys' lives. So, um, it's, it does think, sound like kind of a small, small thing, but it, I mean, it's huge for, for getting guys to really be receptive to what I, the advice that I'm trying to give them on the site. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. It's great what you do. And I think it's important because <laughs> I mean, I see it and I'm sure obviously you see it. There's a lot of guys who, who they really don't know, you know, the ins and outs of what looks good. They're wearing, you know, white New Balance shoes with dress pants. And <laughs> sometimes you're just like, oh man, I'm like, what's going on? So what, as a, as a woman, how would you say that the average man you see dressing, how's he doing nowadays? You know, I think it's actually really an interesting time for guys to be evolving their personal style you know we had a couple of years ago the whole metrosexual thing where there was this big backlash against guys that were interested in style and were interested in sort of upping their game and so for a while that went away and you know it kind of backlash to it's not okay to care about your style at all and it's not manly to be invested in in your wardrobe and now i think we're at this sort of um new era of guys saying, yeah, I, I care about how I look just as much as I care about my favorite, you know, NFL team or my car or the woman in my life or whatever, you know, I think that it's, it's just, it's finally okay to have that interest in style without it being something that other guys mock or that women are, you know, worried about, oh, he spends more time doing his hair than I do. Like, it's just, it's just normal now. It's just okay to, to care about your style. So I find that guys are doing better than ever. And, you know, it's sure I have guys that are coming to Style Girlfriend that, you know, are at ground zero in terms of developing their style. But I also have a lot of guys that have been interested in it for a while and are just sort of looking to take it to the next level. So I get sort of every everybody from beginners to advanced. But the difference between guys coming to my site versus guys maybe reading a GQ or an Esquire or going to a site like a four pins or, you know, one of those kind of more stronger, uh, hashtag menswear sites is the products that I feature on style girlfriend are a lot more accessible. I just think that a lot of menswear out there is super aspirational and it's just not really realistic. Like you can't really break the bank on every single piece in your wardrobe. So to be able to talk about that high low mix of, I get it, you're shopping at the mall. Sometimes you're shopping at target and sure, sometimes you're splurging on bigger items, but, um, you know, generally we're kind of keeping everything within a certain level of reason. I find that that really resonates with readers because that's how I shop too. Like, sure, I'm going to, you know, put aside some money for investment pieces every season, like a really great winter coat or a really great bag, but I'm just as excited about finding, you know, a a really great top on sale at Target. (laughs) And I want to talk about that stuff just as much as I want to talk about, you know, a new pair of leather shoes or whatever it might be. No, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting because I, I mean, I would never think to uh, even check Target for clothes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, there's things to save on and there's things to splurge on. So uh, yeah, I kind of learning yeah. that difference is important. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's crazy how expensive some things are getting nowadays. But I agree with you in the fact that the average has definitely has definitely risen, and it isn't it isn't particularly you know called so and so gay or metrosexual to care about how you look anymore and most of the big Mm -hmm. like pretty much badass metro i mean uh like self-improvement sites for men they they all have style guides now and they're all talking about style and all these pickup artists and all these guys talking about meeting women it's all it's all style 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 is a huge topic and we've been talking a lot about dating on this podcast and on the site so that's that's why i brought you on because i've got a, a bunch of great questions so we can get, you know, a general feel of what women are looking at and looking for in men when we first meet them or if we approach them or if we're going on a first date. So <laughs> I'm going to jump into some of those questions, I guess. Yeah, let's do it. I guess when you when you meet a guy for the first time, like say some guy runs up and stops you on the street, you know, he stops you and he says, I just saw you over there and I thought you looked very nice. I wanted to come say hello. <laughs> What's the first thing you notice about him? Uh, his confidence, first of all. I mean, I, I can honestly count on one hand the n- amount of times that's happened to me in New York City, which is pitiful. Like, there's so really? many women here, and there's so many, you know, yeah, great girls out there, and, and it doesn't happen. Like, I wish 
that guys had the confidence and the um, self-esteem to approach women like that more often because it's fantastic. Like it makes your day it, for someone to yeah come up to you and say, wow, you really caught my eye. I would love to talk to you more. So um, I mean, just the fact that a guy would do that is that's already, you know, a plus one in his book for sure. Yeah, that's I love that you said that because that's um that's something that I've personally been um undertaking in the last two months was learning how to be more sociable and particularly with approaching women. I've been working with the guys from daygame.com on a bunch of programs and they actually they run boot camps all around the world. They teach men how to approach women and not just in a cheesy way, but in a a way where you build you build confidence to the point that it's a beautiful and natural thing and that's what attraction really is is that confidence and there's no lines no nothing cheesy but generally if you see a woman that you're like wow i would like to be with her i'm gonna go and talk to her to be able to do that is great and to hear you saying that you've only been you know approached a few times on one hand is is great and that you would like <laughs> you know that you enjoy when people do that is great for people listening because we preach that a lot so I like right. that you said that. I mean, it's so different than like a cat call from across the street. Like obviously we're talking about, you know, something that is more intentional and is polite and is, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, not like threatening in any way or not demeaning in any way. I mean, yeah, like you said, walking up to someone and saying, hi, you really caught my eye. I'd love to get to know you. That's, I mean, yeah, that's great. That's a compliment. Yeah, I love that. And um, so what about... What about his um his style and how much of a factor is how he looks? I mean, <laughs> I think that the way that style plays into sort of like a, a first meeting or a um you know in first encounter with a guy is that if the guy feels comfortable and confident in what he's wearing, that is going to shine through in the conversation that he has and in the uh you know demeanor that he puts off to someone and, um, you know, that attitude that he has. So I don't think it's so much that women are like noticing a guy's shoes or noticing his watch or noticing his haircut. It's, it's sort of the, the all over effect. Um, and I think that sort of look good, feel good mentality is what, uh, is why so many men's improvement sites do talk about style because it's something where it starts right at the beginning of your day. When you pull something on and you look at yourself in the mirror and can't help, but you know, give yourself some finger guns and like wink a couple of times, like you're going to take on the day in such a different way than if you put something on where you're like, oh, this kind of makes, you know, my beer belly hang out or oh, like I wish, you know, I wish my hair looked different or I wish my shoes looked different. It really does make such a difference. So I think that for me, you know, style is more a building block into talking about confidence and then into talking about sort of living with more intention. And I think you do the same thing, but it's just you know, maybe coming from a different, uh, starting point, but it all, it all ladders back up to the same point, which is just confidence, self-esteem, um, you know, the ability to smile really easily at people and shake their hand and insert yourself into a new group or a new setting with ease. So to be able to walk out and, you know, out the door and take on the world in, in that really confident way, that's, that's what matters about style. Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. Like everything you're saying right now is like music to my ears. <laughs> and that's, it's actually a great segue into what I wanted to talk about later. But I guess we can just it it works right now. So we'll come back to some of the questions I wanted to talk. I was going to bring this up later briefly between the uh, the line between dressing nice in addition to being a confident guy and buying clothes solely for the purpose of gaining confidence and trying to impress people. Because I know I know, like you said, when you when a guy first comes up to you, you're not particularly looking at his shoes. You're not looking at what he's wearing. And I know, I know the guy Yad from DayGame.com. He he'll wear like a regular T-shirt and some jeans and just some trainers. And uh, he's the best at what he you know he's the best at this picking like meeting women thing because he's so natural and confident with it. And he's not an attractive guy at all. <laughs> essentially, Aww. he's a great guy. Like, I don't even know him, but I feel like he's one of my best friends. But um, he's he's amazing. The things he can do. And there's a guy who writes for Men Improvement, Mark Summers of MajorLeagueDating.com, who actually was on the fourth podcast. Um, and he he talks about how he goes out and he 
is so he's trained himself to be so completely natural with women that he talks to them like he talks to their friends mm -hmm. and he has unbelievable results and he told us he goes out to the bar in a wrinkled shirt and some cargo shorts and sandals and he you know he makes people's like jaw drop with the things he can do and like the the you know his his attraction and seduction so i totally agree like that confidence is 100% from the inside out and that's important and it takes a while to build that but I also believe that adding clothing onto that confidence is only like a catalyst and a boot you know it just takes things to the next level mm -hmm. but I, I just wanted to talk about you know some like guys who may have no confidence and uh, you know no social ability but they go out and they'll buy like a $1,000 pair of shoes to try to impress someone like mm. what, are your, what are your thoughts on that like um, yeah, one thousand dollar pair of shoes, that's a lot to yeah. to try to impress. Um, but I will say, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with investing in new items for your wardrobe with the hopes that it will instill confidence. Like I know that when I buy something new that I'm really excited about and I really love, when I do get a chance to wear it for the first time, I'm like, This is great. I look, you know, I can't wait to kind of go outside and have people see me in this and you know, um, wear it to an important meeting or wear it on a date, whatever it is. I yeah. mean, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, just like, you know, I, I've heard the advice and I've given it myself that if you're looking to start a new workout regimen, the best thing you can do is go out and buy new workout clothes because then you're super psyched to wear them to the gym. So, you know, whatever, whatever helps give that boost to your confidence, um, I think it's it's worth it. You know, me again, it doesn't have to be $1000 shoes, but if you buy, buy a new pair of yeah, no. $200, you know, a dress shoes or a really great leather boot, whatever it is, that's something that you'll have it for a long time. It's something you need in your wardrobe anyway. Um, you know, hopefully you're not putting it all on credit and can't afford it or whatever it is, you know, whatever that case may be, but yeah, I think that uh investing in a new wardrobe as a catalyst for improving your confidence, I think that's totally worthwhile. Yeah, no, definitely. And, um, you know, having said that, we even I'm remembering now in the article that we have on our site now about boosting confidence, you know, a couple of our main points is, you know, always dress sharp, you know, every day. If you're if you're really trying to build confidence and momentum over time, you know, don't get up and just roll out of bed and leave the house in a wrinkled T-shirt and everything, because it's just kind of, you know, it doesn't build much momentum. But if you're if you're shaving every day and you're you know you're getting a nice outfit and you got some nice new clothes, it's a great way to start building confidence. But um, I yeah, I just I don't know. I I brought it up because I wanted to just encourage people to like you said, not worry too much about how they look when they're trying to meet people and meet women and try you know more so build their confidence from within. But yeah buying clothes and buying like I know what it look what it's like when you wear a new t-shirt out you feel like a million bucks totally you know that can definitely definitely play a big role in your confidence so there is a fine line and you know essentially it doesn't hurt you know the better you look the better you're gonna feel I always know I knew when I was playing soccer when I was in college our jerseys were terrible and we had these shitty <laughs> we had these shitty socks and I I couldn't play like I was mm -hmm. terrible but when I played, when like when I looked good, I played good, and because I felt good, and it was like that's just the way I was. Like my confidence was always higher when I looked the part. Right. So I think, yeah, I think there's like a lot of different directions that you can go. But at the end of the day, yeah, like you can be a confident guy without it, but it's only gonna make you more confident, and yeah, it's gonna boost. It's gonna boost you if you're you know moping around and you're in a slump. If you start, you know, you go out, you buy a new new outfit and you start dressing sharp and you know sh shaving every day it can really it can really take you out of a slump and start some momentum for you so yeah i love your philosophy on that and i thought that was important to mention so we can we can jump back to the questions now <laughs> i guess i guess a good one is what are the most common like the most common mistakes you see guys repeatedly making that like they shouldn't be making it's kind of just like hit yourself on the forehead when you see it kind of thing <laughs> I think the biggest issue that guys run into is around fit. Uh, and whether that's guys wearing things too baggy or too tight, um, either way, it doesn't, it doesn't look great. Um, generally, unless you're like on the Jersey Shore, the problem is that guys wear things too baggy, uh, especially suits. Um, 
you know, especially anything that ought to be tailored. I think that guys grew up having this idea that everything should fit as comfortably as sweatpants. And so, you know, they buy their first suit two sizes too big because, you know, they think they should be able to play a game of basketball in it. And, and you really shouldn't. Um, things that are, ought to, you know, ought to be tailored should fit closer to your body. And at first, I 100% acknowledge that that's going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. It's going to feel like it's too tight. Um, but if you look at, you know, any guy on the cover of, again, of GQ, any guy walking down a red carpet, that suit is cut pretty close to his body. And that's not to say that you need to have the body of, you know, a musician or an actor or, a, you know, some kind of celebrity that would be on the cover of a magazine. That's true for guys across the board. You always look better in clothes that fit you right. Yeah. So, you know, I think that most guys would do really well to literally take almost everything in their closet to a tailor today, you know, because taking, you know, pants in an inch, you know, from the cuff or taking it in at the shoulder, not at the shoulders, but you know, the back or, uh, you know, taking in dress shirts that are really blousey and taking them in at the side, like that makes a huge difference. And again, you might be a little bit uncomfortable at first thinking that it's too tight, but you'll get used to it. And the amount of compliments that you'll, that you'll start getting on your wardrobe, having people ask you if you got you know, all new clothes, telling you how slim you look, telling you how handsome you look, it'll, you know, you'll see the difference pretty quickly. And I think you'll convert to, to slimmer cuts pretty quickly. Yeah, that's, that's an amazing tip. I know for me, I mean, I'm not a suit guy. I never had a corporate job or anything, but mm -hmm. every suit I've bought since high school, whether it be four or five, it gets a little smaller each time. <laughs> no, yeah. Like, and because I get a little more comfortable with it and then I'm realized and I'll put that old suit on. I'll be like, I actually wore this like this is so big on me. <laughs> like I just bought a suit from Zara, actually. And it's, you know, it's probably it's slim, but it looks it looks great. I agree. And I think it's you know, it's a great thing you brought up about tailoring clothes that you have now that might be a little too baggy because I actually never thought of that. But yeah, most of my dress shirts probably could, you know, use a little bit of tailoring and that can take an old shirt that kind of has lost its flair and, you know, spruce it right back up. Absolutely. You don't have to go out and buy all new clothes. You can shop your closet and for, you know, a fraction of the price of something new, just take it to the tailor, have really minor alterations made and feel like you have an entirely new wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Are there any other uh, mistakes that you notice? Um, you know, it's smaller things. It's, you know, when guys leave the back vent um, of a new coat or sports coat, like they would leave the stitch in, like mm -hmm. you're supposed to take that stitch out or, you know, the yeah. tag that's on a new overcoat that's sort of on the sleeve, like you're supposed to take that off. So things like that, that just kind of make a guy look a little bit amateurish. Um, those, those kind of things like drive me nuts. Like I'll be on the subway and I just like wish I could, you know, rip that vent stitch apart. But hmm. otherwise it's, it's definitely fit. And what else? I, I don't think many women like a guy who's wearing logos all over. You know, I think that sort of should be left back in middle school. Uh, mm -hmm. The idea of like the sweatshirt with the huge logo emblazoned on the chest um, or, you know, an accessory with the logo all over it. So that's probably the, the other thing that just kind of gives off a, a whiff of desperation or just of not knowing your own style. And I think that's something that women can sense. Like if a guy doesn't really know what he's doing with his style, it's... Um, you know, that, that kind of comes off. I, I always think of, um, Paul Shear on the league, like how all of the guys always make fun of him for, you know, which, which character is he? Cause I love that. Show. Oh, he's the Dr. Novak. Okay. Like okay. Plastic yeah, surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> and he always shows up and like, they always make fun of what he's wearing. Cause it feels like he doesn't have a strong sense of who he is. And that's really reflected in his clothing. Yeah, so Andre, yeah. yeah, Andre, exactly. Like it makes, they sort of tease him for that, but it, it is something that is pretty noticeable and like obviously those guys aren't even into fashion like it's not like the rest of his friends are like oh you should be wearing this that or the other it's just that they can kind of sense that he is trying so hard so no exactly so, yeah yeah like, he's always got a ridiculous vest on or something i know exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah he loves those vests so the fedoras or like you know, exactly patterns and yeah it's just something where it feels like he's i mean there's nothing wrong with uh, you know having developing your style an evolution and a process, but, you know, do it in smaller increments rather than try to, you know, do something totally crazy every single day. Yeah. Essentially he's, uh, he's peacocking and, uh, 
Yeah. Trying, almost trying to buy his way into uh, high society and, you know, women and everything. And that comes back to the whole confidence thing, you know, because he doesn't have much of it. But yeah, yeah I'd he, be curious about like your take on peacocking, because I mean, obviously, all the pickup artist stuff says that you should be wearing something pretty flashy. But, well, you know, I as a woman like that's not, you know, I'm not attracted to a guy just because he wears like a fancy hat. So, yeah, well, I'm actually I'm actually not into the the support like per se pickup artist stuff i'm actually against that like a lot of people are now and uh yeah peacocking to me is ridiculous i was gonna ask you the same thing like what you thought about it but um yeah i'm in you know the things that i'm into and that we teach and that the guys at daygame.com teaches is pretty much being natural you know the more natural you can be in in like your dating life and meeting people and the more confidence you can build the better and that pretty much is the opposite of everything that pickup artists <laughs> teach because they're like, go in and say this. And if she answers with this, then you say this. But if she answers with this, and you say this. And it's, it's pretty ridiculous. It's like a decision tree. Yeah. Yeah. It's so unnatural and it's so robotic. And yeah, walking around with like uh, feathers coming out of your hat. You, know, <laughs> you, you won't see me doing that. So but, right. that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you the same thing. That's funny. Um, all right. I'm, uh, I'm not great with matching like what should match with what i usually try to match my belt and my shoes i don't know why i just think that looks good sure what what are your uh do you have any guidelines for this i mean you've got the most important one down yeah belt should match the shoes you shouldn't be wearing a brown belt with a black shoe or vice versa um but beyond that i think that i'm glad you brought that up because i do feel like that's an impediment that guys talk to me about like oh well, well i'm scared to start you know, uh, trying different things in my wardrobe because I don't know what matches. But there's really not a lot that you can do that's so wrong when it comes to putting together different colors and patterns and textures in your wardrobe. I mean, as long as there's, you know, let's say you have a shirt that is like a purple gingham and then you have a tie that has dark blue, green, and, you know, violet flowers. Like you can put those together because there's purple in both of them. So, you know, just sort of look for complementary shades and you're fine. Even if it's a totally different pattern, even if it's a totally different uh, version of that same color, it's actually better when it is totally different. Otherwise, you might end up looking too matchy matchy. So, yeah. definitely don't be afraid to try really interesting combinations because it, like, Literally 99% of the time, it will look really cool. I mean, if you look on, again, you know, any real, you know, men's editorial, um, you know, cover GQ, cover of Oscar, whatever it is, like that guy is wearing probably a pattern shirt with a pattern tie with a pattern pocket square. And none of them came from the same brand. You know, they don't, they weren't meant to go together in any specific way. So it really does go to many rules that you have to abide by when it comes to men's fashion and women's fashion is the same way you know it's it's generally like the more the more the merrier when it comes to patterns and textures so it just adds a layer of visual interest once you start going a little more wild with what it is that you're willing to put together and it, it I guess in that way like that would be how I would say that guys could you know quote unquote peacock like wear a pocket square <laughs> like wear a tie that contrasts with your your shirt in an interesting way like mm. that's the kind of visual interest that will catch a woman's eye much better than yeah like a hat with a feather in it or <laughs> jeans with like you know crystal studding on the on the butt pockets or Rhinestones, whatever yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah no it's great and actually that brought a thought into my head about like layering and stuff i mean i don't know much about that I mean, what do you... Yeah, I mean, again, you know, the more the merrier, I think, especially, I mean, it's fall right now and it's such a great time for kind of experimenting with your style and with trying out different looks. Like, don't be afraid to throw a jean jacket under a sport coat or don't be afraid to put a sweater over a dress shirt, over a tie. You know, there's there are so many different ways that you can kind of get... Um, get interesting, you know, get your look more yeah. going on with when it comes to like fall layers so this is your opportunity really to try a bunch of new things and see what works and see what doesn't and sometimes you'll feel you know like the michelin man like you're <laughs> you know wearing everything in your closet but sometimes you'll put something together that you wouldn't have thought to put together before and you'll leave the house and you'll have like five compliments before you get to work that day like 
yeah, it generally works in your favor to to put a few more things together because there's just that much more opportunity for uh, you know catching a woman's eye. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, fall. I love fall. It's definitely uh, this is definitely the time to go out and you know. Look yeah, good. I love wearing pea coats and things like that. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's before light. it gets so cold that you have yeah. to like put everything under a tr- you know a, an overcoat or a big parka. So. Yeah, I mean, use the excuse of, oh, it's getting colder to like layer up with, you know, instead of putting on like a big coat, put on like many thinner layers and it's, it always looks good. I mean, if you look in any catalog, like J. Crew, you know, Land's End, L. Bean, like those kind of like yeah. brands that are really known for, for great layering and great fall pieces, like, all those models are wearing like at least 18 pieces of clothing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's what I, that's what <laughs> pops into my head when I think like layering, because I do, I do it. I'll wear like a, you know, a nice shirt and then a nice like uh, little fleece and then maybe like yeah. something else over it. And it, it looks great. And you see these guys in these magazines, they've got like six shirts on, like you said, yeah. but it, it just works sometimes. And you know, it's hard to do, I guess, but you kind of just got to find what works for you. Right. And Absolutely. I'm and you won't know until you try it. And maybe like by the time you get to the office, you'll have to like take off two of those layers because you'll be, you know, sweating through your clothes. But but who knows? Maybe you'll be like, oh, this is actually, you know, this is nice to be like warm when I'm outside and comfortable still when I'm inside. So, yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll never know until you try it. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of like, you know, throwing a like a, maybe a Birkin necklace on and like maybe like ah. a shell bracelet, depending if I'm dressing a little preppy. But I've seen guys with like double ankle bracelets on both legs, like with Whoa. shorts and like, what are you? That's intense. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you have the same take on that as me, that it's a little bit like sometimes it's like, yeah. I mean, your own personal style is your own personal style. And by all means, sure. do, do you. But what do you know? What do you think when you see that? I think when it comes to accessories, I mean, yeah, less is more. Like, unless you're wearing something that has a lot of sentimental value, like, you know, um, like a St. Christopher medal that was passed down by your dad or like a watch that, yeah, like belonged to your grandfather or your girlfriend gave you or whatever it is. I think unless it's something that does have, you have a personal attachment to, I think just be wary. You know, if you are layering on like the wrist cuffs and dog tags and you know huge cuff links and this and that and the other you you do run the risk of um, like you're trying too hard so um i love the you know yeah an um like a bracelet here or like a thin chain there um you know i i those smaller touches i think definitely are what can help elevate a look from just sort of I threw this on to like, oh, I actually put some effort into what I'm wearing today. But yeah, don't go overboard. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely love a nice uh, a nice bracelet here and there. But <laughs> Yeah. But um all right, so we'll move on. Um what's what's like a killer go-to outfit for a first date? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I would assume that a first date you're not going anywhere too fancy. Obviously, you're still getting to know this girl, so don't probably put, you know, break the bank on, on like a really expensive restaurant or anything like that. So you're probably a little bit more dressed down. You know, you could wear some dark jeans with a really great desert boot and maybe a button up shirt with like a chunky cardigan or like a really great sweater over it with sort of the collar of the dress shirt peeking out. Um, you know, pull the sleeves out and kind of push them back up over the, the sweater a little bit. So it all looks nice and casual, but you know, sort of like I just, you rolled out of bed like this, but obviously with a little bit more intentionality. Um, and then just make sure to do your hair. Like, I think that's something where guys literally can take like an extra two minutes and their hair looks 10,000% better. (laughs) So, you know, whether that's just adding a little bit of product, whether it's, um, you know, even blowing it dry, if you have a little bit longer of hair that needs, you know, a little bit more, um, convincing to, you know, get the part where it's supposed to go or get it to, you know, sweep back the way you want it to. I think that you can't really overestimate, um, yeah, that sort of small level of grooming really does make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. I was just flipping through your book and I saw that section on grooming and I was going to ask you about that, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that 
if even if you don't want to go to you know a quote unquote hairstylist on the regular, like even if you want to go to you know kind of a a barber for your maintenance, like it's I think it's really worth it for a guy to visit a stylist at least once to get you know the the intel on what type of product is best for their hair, whether that's a pomade or a wax or a cream. Um, you know, not everyone's hair requires the same product and. Honestly, like even if you've been using one product since like high school, your hair can change and you might actually do better by switching up to another type of product. So, you know, get get some advice from an expert on that and, you know, they'll be able to teach you how best to use it also. And again, unless you have like crazy Fabio hair, like it shouldn't take that long to do your hair. It's just a matter of actually taking the time to do it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um, for for everyone listening... If you like the stuff that Megan's talking about, I'm actually flipping through her book right now, which is, you know, what's the title again? Uh, How to Build a Wardrobe Women Want to See You Wearing. Yeah, and it's great. And uh, where can where can people buy it if, if they like what they hear during this? Yeah, they can head to Amazon um, or iTunes or Barnes & Noble. Uh, yeah, because it's available Yeah, pretty much anywhere that you might want to read a book on a tablet, you can find it. I can send you links if you want to put them in the, you know, the comments section. Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll include links to that and uh, anything else we're talking about. When in a little bit later, you can go to menprovement.com slash mpp006. And all right, yeah, I'm, I'm flipping through here and I see the chapter labeled "Clean Out Your Closet." And it says you like to <laughs> clean out your closet twice a year. Yes, I absolutely purge my closet twice a year. So. I live in New York where, you know, space is a commodity um, that I don't have. Uh, So, you know, I can't have everything in my closet all the time. So my summer stuff is out in the warm weather months and my, you know, winter stuff is out in the cold weather months. So, you know, twice a year I have to lug out all of those big Rubbermaid bins containing the off-season clothes and swap it out. So that's the perfect time when... I'm putting all that stuff away from, for the season to say, do I really want to pull this back out next season? And often the answer is no. And it's, you know, it makes my life easier because it means it's stuff that I don't have to pack away. And also it just freshens up my wardrobes so that the following year I can say, oh, that's right. I gave away, you know, those sandals or I gave away those jeans or I gave away that blazer. And it means, okay, it's time to shop for a new, you know, this, that or the other. So it lets you make a shopping list and Make sure that you only have the items in your closet that you actually want to be wearing and really should be wearing. Because sometimes we keep things way longer than we should just because, you know, they're sentimental value, because they're so comfortable. But, you know, oftentimes (laughs) comfortable translates to ratty. Um, So, yeah, I mean, it's when you're changing out your, your clothes. And even if you keep everything in your closet, but maybe you're just sort of switching things from the back to the front, whatever it is. Take that time to say, do I really want to be pulling this back out next year? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, on top of that, minimalism is a a great tool for uh, for stress reduction. And sometimes it just feels good to to purge and get rid of stuff. And you could even, you know, you could even make money on some of those old clothing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, take it to a consignment store, sell it on eBay, like turn it into a game, like see, I mean, because yeah, you should never be like throwing any of this stuff out unless it's literally like, you know, holes everywhere and turning it into like a a dust rag. Like, you know, that clothes, those clothes can be, you know, used by somebody else. And yeah, even if you donate them, you know, then you're yeah, absolutely doing a good deed. Feel good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I totally agree with your idea of like, minimalism and de-stressing by like, uncluttering uncluttering your life I think that you know you talk about like a clean you know uh, like efficiency experts talk about a clean workspace like it's the same thing in your closet if you have a closet that's just like jam-packed full of stuff you probably will feel stressed out every time you open your closet and you'll just end up reaching for the things that you know work over and over and over again and so you end up wearing like 25% of your closet so you might as well downsize and actually love everything you own instead of just sort of like pulling something out, going, uh, and then putting it back in again. Cause like that, that item isn't, it's not doing you any good. And you know, maybe it can be fixed by getting it tailored. Maybe like what you don't like about it is the fit, but maybe it's just not your style. Maybe you bought it on sale and thought you'd be able to find a way to wear it and you just never did. But like, whatever it is, like 
fire fast, you know, like get, just get rid of it if it's not doing any good. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, I'm going through your book, like I said, right now, and it, it's got some really amazing stuff, you know, pretty much every piece of clothing, like, and accessory a guy could need is, is broken down, you know, what you should look for, you know, what, what every type of shoe that you need in your closet, <laughs> like, and then, and then it even goes into breaking down whole outfits. So, you know, yeah. you've got a presentation, it's got outfit idea, like all the, all the actual clothing laid out like next to each other and it's business casual date night. It's great. It's incredible. It would take me about two hours to go through all this stuff with <laughs> Megan. So if you're interested in it, definitely check it out. But yeah, it's definitely for the guy that wants to walk out of the house looking good, but isn't super interested in fashion. And like, I get where that guy is coming from. I am not like, I'm not reading fashion blogs every day by any means, but I definitely want to dress well. I want to, um, you know, look good when I walk into a meeting, look good when I walk into a date. And so to be able to provide those shortcuts to guys to be like, I get it. You don't want to spend the time trying to figure out how to put this together. Here is an example of something that you probably have all these things in your closet already. So just put those together and, you know, I promise you'll look good in it. I think that that's what's really valuable. Yeah, absolutely. So like for, for an example, you know, she's got the business casual here and it's like gray suit, white dress shirt, navy tie, brown shoes, brown belt, polka dot dress socks and silk pocket square. And she's got a picture of everything and it's all, it's all laid out nice. It's, you know, it's really impressive. And as well as that, she has a section on caring for your clothes and how to wash every type of material, when to wash. And a lot of work went into this. It's impressive. I'm, I'm liking it. But. Well, again, I, you know, it's nothing that couldn't be figured out by a guy who is figure, you know, who's, who's working on all of this, just like I'm sure that most guys, if they really wanted to, could buckle down and, you know, go through all this self-improvement stuff and just kind of do it manually. But, you know, to have a guide, to have some help along the way, I think that it's, it's valuable just, you know, in the same way that your site is valuable to guys who, yeah, are looking for sort of an overall, um, self-improvement sort of primer tutorial so yeah i hope that it's it's i hope guys find it helpful yeah and you've got in the back you've got a big list of brands what are you um what do you think guys you know you mentioned target before but i don't know what if you meant like all clothes like where can guys find <laughs> quality clothes like on a budget online and offline i think that's a great question i mean um certainly there's things that you shouldn't be paying a lot of money for you shouldn't be paying a lot of money for t-shirts you know you shouldn't be paying a lot of money for like foundation elements like underwear and socks um and like so by all means pick those up at target in bulk <laughs> um and same with grooming products you don't need like the fanciest you know fifty dollar pomade like you can absolutely go to the drugstore and find something that really works for you um you know where guys should be spending more money is probably their shoes, their suits, their coats, you know, those are the things that are so timeless and you really want to last. And when you don't buy uh, those items as an investment, you can kind of see the wear and tear pretty quickly. So uh, for those big ticket items, definitely think about what you can spend in your budget and then like spend at the, the upper echelon of that budget. Um, but you can absolutely find great things within your budget at the mall, at department stores. I think Nordstrom is a really great resource for guys. The sales mm -hmm. associates are freaking amazing and, you know, can guide you to what it is that you're looking for in your price range. Uh, J crew is a really great resource for guys. It has everything from, you know, weekend casual to work looks because they do have, you know, a line of suits that are pretty universally flattering for different body types. Um, club Monaco is, a brand that I've actually seen do a lot of interesting things in the past like couple of years. They've kind of brought um a new a new designer in and are doing some some great things on both the men's and the women's sides. Uh Gant Rugger is a brand I really love for guys. Um Yeah, I love those. Yeah, that you know, again, it goes from taking you to work to taking you to the weekend. And mm -hmm. I think that for guys and for you know for me too, like I want a wardrobe that is as versatile as possible. Like I want to be able to wear something every day of the week <laughs> somehow. So to be able to, you know, walk into those stores where you really do feel like you can see 
how you can wear it Monday to Friday and Saturday, Sunday. That's really the goal. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you brought up you brought up socks somewhere in there, and it got me thinking because I was listening to Jordan Harbinger, Harbinger, the uh, the owner of the Art of Charm. I was listening to his podcast the other day. He's actually going to be a guest on the show in a few weeks. And cool. he was talking about one of the, you know, one of the biggest mistakes guys make is they'll go out on a date and they'll have like these nice shoes and jeans and then they'll have white crew socks on <laughs> and like they'll creep up in the middle of the date and it's just like uh-huh. the most unattractive thing in the world. Like, so I definitely think investing in a nice pair of uh, not white crew socks if you're, <laughs> if yeah. you're going out or going to work. It's so funny. I wouldn't have even honestly thought to point that out, but yes, a hundred percent. Yes, that's. Uh, you know, it's not that hard to pull on a pair of black dress socks yeah. instead of tube socks. But that said, like socks is actually one of the places that I always encourage guys to get more creative. Like, cause you only see a flash of it. Like if you're crossing your legs in a meeting or if you're, you know, climbing stairs, like that's really the only time that people are going to see your socks. So have some fun with it. Why not? Like get a pair of polka dot dress socks or get a pair of socks <laughs> with like a fun pattern, you know, or crazy <laughs> colors. Like why not? Like if it, you know, if it makes you happy to kind of like, know that you're wearing fun socks like and gives you a little bit more confidence for the day i say go for it yeah no that's funny because i've actually got polka dot dress socks and uh, i think last time we talked i i remember bringing up that i was like the the fancy sock guy and every time i I would see certain girls that like when i when i was working on different jobs and they'd be like oh you're the kid with the nice socks i love your socks like because i'd always have like nice checkered red socks if i had like a red shirt on or i have like you know blue striped socks with you know my blue button down and it's just these little things that like the sock would creep up and i'd got i got compliments all the time on my socks yes like yeah and like i'm sure at first you were like wait seriously just my socks like that's what's impressing you but it's like yeah yeah it doesn't take much. Like <laughs> No, it doesn't. It's like putting the little, in a little, it's like the little things. Huge yeah. yeah. The little things that matter. But yeah, so what can um wrapping it up, what can guys find like I love your philosophies and I'm sure people listening to. What else can they expect to find on a weekly basis from stylegirlfriend.com? You know, on style girlfriend, guys are gonna be able to find those shortcuts, the tips, the tricks that really give you the fast track to great style. You know, I, again, I know that if you really wanted to, and if you were really interested in it, you could undertake this process all by yourself. You know, I, I trust that guys will eventually uncover their, their personal style and, um, you know, look great and have a wardrobe of clothes that, you know, fits him perfectly and really suits him. But if you don't want to sort of undertake that by yourself, like come to style girlfriend and just get some help in, you know, outfit inspiration and figuring out how to remix your wardrobe. Like maybe you have some things that you like wearing one specific way, but you can't really figure out how else you could wear them. Like style girlfriend is great for that. You know, it's, it's saying, okay, so let's shop your closet. You've got this great. Why not wear it this, this, and this way? Or, you know, did you ever think of, yeah, pairing these two things together? So it's definitely not about, um, you know, telling you that you have to throw away everything you own and start all over again. It's definitely about, you know, working with the the stuff that you already have in your closet and figuring out how to make it even more stylish and make it look even better on you. And then just beyond that, it's about, you know, making that sort of look good, feel good connection. So just like you're talking to guys about self-improvement, I'm talking to guys about, yeah, how they can feel more confident and the starting point is style, but obviously you know, that confidence can come from so many different things that we do end up touching on everything from fitness to, you know, what your home looks like to how you travel. So, you know, there's a whole range of what guys are going to find when they do visit the site. And I hope you do. I hope they do. Yeah, me too. It's a, it's a really great site. You guys should definitely check it out. And, um, I guess we'll, we'll finish up. I like to ask people, well, it's actually the first time, but (laughs) I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I like to ask people, you know, what's the one, you know, piece of advice you have to like to leave people with now for the show? Oh, wow. That's such a great question. You know, I would say see it as an opportunity, you know, don't see it as a problem. Don't see it as a, you know, something you have to roll your eyes at and, you know, sigh and exasperation. Like personal style can be fun. It can be fun to work on improving the way you look. I mean, just like going to the gym can kind of feel like a pain 
when it's 6 a.m. and your alarm is going off and the last thing you want to do is get out of bed. But as soon as you leave that gym, you're like, oh, my God, I feel like I can take on the day. So see, you know, try to see style in the same way. Like, don't make it be a struggle. Don't make it be, um, you know, a hassle. But, you know, instead, like, really see it as an opportunity to, um, you know, look good and feel good and feel more confident. So see it as something that's fun and seeing it, see it as something that, um, you know, you can't really get wrong. You can only get better at it as time goes along. So, um, yeah, have fun with it, have fun with your style and, um, yeah, don't be, don't be overwhelmed or don't be intimidated. Like you really can't get it wrong. So just, just go for it. That's great. Um, I totally agree. You know, I love your philosophy. I love what you do. And thanks for coming on the show. It's been great. Cool. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. All right, guys. So that's the end of our show. And if you want to check out the show notes, you know, you can find all the links to Megan's stuff and Megan's book at menprovement.com slash MPP006. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for listening to the Men Improvement Podcast with Sean Russell. Get more episodes, more tips, and download our free self-improvement ebooks at www.menprovement.com.